Hello, you're watching Duke's Copy TV. I'm Ben Jones, bringing you today's Commodities Corner. Across the globe this week, both coffee and corn have hit lows in the market. The US have had a record yield of corn and Brazil have helped contribute to an unexpected amount of coffee. But how are these two commodities faring in Africa? Edward George from Ecobank is on the line. Thank you for joining me today. Now, to begin with, Africa's largest robusta coffee shipper, Uganda, have seen record increases in exports of robusta coffee continue. So how will the international price environment affect the sector? The thing about Uganda is um, it's really turned a corner when it comes to its coffee sector. Um, this season for 2012-13, it's, a, it's on track to export 3.7 million bags of coffee, which is the highest level in 15 years. And it really looks like the momentum will continue into next season. This is a reflection of good weather, um, improved policies and support for the Robusta sector. And it has also made Uganda the largest exporter of Robusta in Africa, even though its neighbor, Ethiopia, is actually a much larger producer. Producer, but of course consumes a lot more of its coffee. The worry is the robusta price. Um, coffee prices have been under a lot of pressure in recent, recent years, but particularly robusta. Since March, uh, international prices have lost around a third of their value, and the fall in prices has speeded up since October. Um, it couldn't really have come at a worse time for Uganda, which is really putting a lot of its bets on the coffee sector. Um, and as the most important robusta um, exporter was really starting to gain market share. Um, ultimately, going forward, I think there really needs to be a focus in Uganda on other commodities as well. Um, it can't just put all of its um, eggs in one basket when it comes to coffee. Um, there needs to be more focus on other coffee varieties and, and crops which grow well there, such as sugar and maize, um, also for the local market, not just for the international market. Now, moving on to a larger scale, what is the outlook for certified coffee in Africa? How important is certified coffee to the global market? Well, I think the interesting thing with certified coffee is it, it is it is no longer a niche market. It's becoming increasingly important to the international coffee market. If we take the three main certification schemes, UTZ, Fair Trade, and Rain, for, uh, Rainforest Alliance, um, together they uh, produce around 1.5 million tons of coffee for the current season. Um, that's around 22% of um, global supplies, and it's rising much faster than conventional coffee. This reflects the demand of consumers, but also particularly the manufacturers and the off-takers who are under pressure to um, perform ethically and to ensure that they can source their, um, their, their coffee from ethical sources. Um, and in Africa, we're seeing around, uh, it, Africa accounts for around uh, 5 to 10 percent of certified coffee at the moment, but that is also increasing very fast. I think it is a key market um, for Africa in particular because certification is really all about improved farming practices and improving the conditions for the local community. And in Africa, this is where some of the worst abuses have occurred. Um, this is where the most progress can be made. So I think going forward, we're going to see um, a lot more certification. The vast majority of trading companies have all committed to certifying 100% of their coffee by 2020. And we might find a number of them achieving that level before that date. OK, now this week in the US, we have seen a record crop. However, in contrast, Zimbabwe are going through a grain shortage. How serious are Zimbabwe's grain shortages? And does this mean Zambia will have to take up the role of Africa's breadbasket? Yes, well, I think Zimbabwe is facing a very serious grain shortage. Um, production has been falling for the last two to three years. Um, they're forecasting for this season around 800,000 tonnes of maize. Demand is at least 2 million tonnes. And so they're increasingly dependent on imports from other countries. Um, all across southern Africa, there are many maize producers. And in fact, they tend to export their surpluses to their neighbours and not to the international market. It's only really South Africa, which is a major maize exporter. So we've seen a kind of reversal of roles in the last five years between Zambia and Zimbabwe. Um, five years ago, Zimbabwe was the breadbasket of southern Africa. Africa, now it's Zambia. And in fact, the Zambian government has just recently agreed to export an emergency 150,000 tons to Zimbabwe to try and meet these shortages. So I definitely think going forward, we're going to see Zambia as an increasingly important maize supplier to the region. Um, and ultimately, um, uh, it, it's not so much about price. It's really about the ability of getting the supply to the market. We've seen um, maize prices slump since July. They've lost nearly 40% of their value. But within Africa, they've been relatively stable. It's all about the sources of local demand. The real problem is getting the maize to where it's needed. 
Africa produces easily enough food to feed itself, but it cannot get the food to market um, in the right condition. And something like 40% of Zambia's maize harvest is lost because of inability to store it properly or get it to market. If they can overcome these problems, I think we'll see a lot more maize flows going around Africa. And finally, how has the slump in global maize prices affected sub-Saharan Africa's producers? And what is the outlook for global and regional prices going forward? Well, I think uh, ultimately the, 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 the slump in uh, maize prices by about 40% since July has not had too serious an impact on Africa because the real issue across southern and east Africa is getting the maize to market. It's not so much uh, about prices. There are plentiful supplies. But I think internationally um, we've seen um, that there are expectations of yet another bumper crop um, of corn, particularly in the U.S., uh, and, and also we're seeing improvements again in the Black Sea region. We're seeing improvements uh, in Europe. So the outlook is, is incredibly bearish for maize. Um, but ultimately, a point will come uh, where we should see a turn. Um, we are seeing a, a response in um, uh, global growth, not just in emerging markets, but also in the largest markets in the world. And ultimately, that is going to drive consumption, and we're going to see uh, increased demand for, for food. So... I would expect that uh, maize prices are going to remain weak um, for the rest of the year, but there will be an uptick because we are seeing this real pickup um, in demand across the world, particularly for animal feed, and that will give the support needed going into 2014. Edward, thank you very much for joining me today. That is all for the final Commodities Corner of the week. Make sure you stay tuned with us throughout the day for updates and exclusive interviews. I'll be back later with your movers and shakers for the day, but for now, goodbye. <laughs>